Hey there folks, Andrew Swan here, and today I'm going to show you how to use the free and open source video editing program Shotcut to transcode pretty much any video file on your computer into ProRes QuickTime MOVs. So why would I make another tutorial about transcoding files to ProRes? I already have two tutorials about using AVI Synth and FFmpeg to do this which you can watch by checking out the recommended videos right about now. Not everybody wants to set up like three or four different programs, a bunch of plugin files, and set up two text files for every conversion that they want to do. And Shotcut, because of how it works as a video editing program, actually is a really good simple way to transcode video files. Now there are some downsides to using it, which I will go into uh, as the tutorial goes along, but for the most part, if you just want a program to plop a video file into, tweak a couple of settings, hit export, and it goes, it's a good program to do that with. All right. Um, Standard caveat applies, of course, which is to virus scan everything I tell you to download before putting it onto your computer. And with that, let's get started. So this is Shotcut. I've tried a number of different video editing programs that use the MLT engine as part of the program. Uh, most of the free and open source video editing programs for Linux use that. And uh, when these programs got ported over to Windows, a lot of them have some issues. Uh, the most glaring of which is that if you bring in a fairly heavily compressed H.264 file into it and then try to scrub through the timeline or play it backwards or something like that, uh, it will just kind of slow to a halt and then crash. And this was true for like three or four different programs, including Shotcut. However, in about the last year or so, for whatever reason, Shotcut has become stable. Uh, and as a result, I feel pretty confident in recommending it for anybody who just needs a relatively simple video editing program that can do a lot more than uh, programs like Windows Movie Maker used to be able to. And because it uses FFmpeg as its rendering engine, it can export files out to ProRes, just like command line FFmpeg can. I'm not gonna show you how to use Shotcut as a video editing program, however, because we don't need to know that in order to use this program to transcode video. But if you are interested in that, uh, there is a tutorials link on the Shotcut page that gives you a number of really nice little simple videos uh, that describe how to use the basic features and manipulate the interface and stuff like that. Uh, plus, there's a bunch of other tutorial videos down at the bottom, including this crazy long 45 plus video course that uh, was developed. So just if that's what you're interested in, you can go and find that on the Shotcut webpage. All right, once you're ready to grab it though, just go to click to download, grab the 64-bit Windows installer, or if you want to have a little more control about where the files are dumped on your hard drive, then grab the 64-bit Windows portable zip. Regardless, whatever file you download, make sure to virus scan it and then install. For the zip file, you just basically extract it into your directory of choice and you're good to go. For the installer, you just double click to run it and do next, 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 finish. So it's not even really worth showing. Uh, it's so simple. But once it's installed, you can go to your start menu, just type in shortcuts and you will find it there. When you click on it, it will run and there you go. Um, you might wonder where the timeline is and where the project window is. <laughs> so 
Shotcut starts out with a very simple interface. And uh, you can add to that interface by clicking on these buttons up here. So you can add in things like uh, peak meter, properties, history, playlist, filters, a timeline, and the window that we're most interested in, which is the export panel. Um, but I'm actually just going to remove pretty much all of those because we don't need them. We will eventually need the export window, but not at first. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is grab this file here. In California, depending upon the part of the California you work. All right, which is an upscale of a file ripped from a DVD. It is already in ProRes currently, but I'm just going to use this to show you how transcoding a progressive video looks like, uh, which is, I assume, the majority of what you're probably going to be using this program for. Basically, once it's in, the video is dragged in, uh, it's on this source panel. Uh, as you can see here, there is a source and a project panel. And if you had other clips or a timeline, you could switch over to the project panel and uh, could mess with your timeline in there. But in this case, because we're not doing any editing of any kind, all we have to do is pause the video with the spacebar and click on export. If you have your settings set to video mode automatic, which it is by default, uh, then it should automatically populate the resolution, aspect ratio, and frame rate with the correct settings. And basically then all you have to do is scroll down this list on the side here, select Intermediate ProRes, and if you want to use um, something other than ProRes 422, click on the other tab and change, say like vProfile to, if you wanted to do 422HQ, you do vProfile equals three. Uh, so it's the similar scheme as previous video tutorials uh, that I've done using FFmpeg from the command line. It's just in here, it's vProfile versus profile. So. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that setting and go back here and click on export file. And we're just going to call this test. And boom, you are now transcoding your video file. So compared to the other tutorial, pretty simple, right? Um, as I mentioned before, there are some downsides to using Shotcut to transcode. One of them is speed. Uh, this is not true for all codecs that you have in the list here. Like I'm pretty sure that um, H.264 encodes run a little bit faster, but for some reason, uh, ProRes does not encode particularly fast even though on the command line version, it will use close to all of your CPU power. Uh, you can kind of see down here, and if you go into Task Manager, you can see that the CPU performance is about uh, a quarter of my total CPU power. Uh, it's a six core CPU with hyper-threading, technically. I'm not entirely sure why it's this slow, uh, it could be because the video has to be run through the MLT engine first and then passed out to FFmpeg and something about that interlink between the two engines is uh, creating some sort of a bottleneck. Or it could be something else. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but regardless, it takes a while. So. I'm just going to leave this to render for a bit and come back once it's done. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and close Shotcut, and we can take a quick look at our resulting 
transcode. In California, depending upon the part of the California you work in, your geographic district that you primarily patrol. Yeah, so looking pretty good. And in fact, um, if we want to take this and bring it into After Effects, I can show you some interesting stuff. Um, the file that I just worked with was this, which is an AVI synth upscale. Let's take a look at the difference between that and the transcoded video. And as you can see, identical. All right. Unfortunately, uh, that is not the case for every file that you can transcode in Shotcut. In particular, if you're dealing with interlaced video, it kind of eh, messes with the video in some undesirable ways. Let's take a look at the original video uh, for comparison here. This is what's off of the DVD. And uh, After Effects has a pretty crappy deinterlacer built in, uh, which basically just throws out every other field. So you end up with half the resolution of the original video. But it will show you what sort of the gamma and color profile is like, which is what's important here. Uh, now let's compare that to the AVI Synth Upscale. And as you can see, obviously, uh, because the process I used has a pretty nice deinterlacer built in, it uh, does a good job. All right, now let's take a look at what happens when you upscale using Shotcut. Now, this is at a 60 frames per second uh, frame rate, which is in theory what you should be playing back because it's a interlaced video signal. Uh, if you do that, you can see the original and then the shot cut version. Yeah, it shifts everything green. Worse yet, if you try to change the frame rate, this happens. <laughs> uh, you get a shift in terms of the color profile that's used. I don't know why it does this, but it does it. So uh, the bottom line is try to avoid using interlaced footage if possible. And if you are going to consider upscaling the footage at some point, do it in a different program rather than Shotcut uh, because Shotcut's built-in upscaling uh, does not do a great job, especially if you change the frame rate or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Now, if those color shifts don't bother you and you just need to get something converted uh, to throw into a project and that's it, then you may just live with the issues. But I think it's good to make sure that you're informed before you do anything. Also, when you do have uh, interlaced video, you will notice that there are a number of different deinterlacer modes. Obviously, you want to go with the default, which is Yadif, Temporal, plus Spatial. Uh, however, that deinterlacer does not try to interpolate full frames out of all of the field data. Instead, what it does is it kind of um, works at essentially that same half resolution that the After Effects deinterlacer does, but it does a better job of sort of kind of smoothing out the transition between lines. If you have true 60 fields per second interlaced footage, uh, then you will want to use QTGMC inside of AVI Synth. Uh, plus FFmpeg to deinterlace your footage, or you want to use some sort of a professional deinterlacing plugin in After Effects or Premiere Pro like uh, Fields Kit. Uh, otherwise, you're going to lose detail. So anyway, that is it for this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or constructive criticism, please leave it in the comments section down below. 
I will have a link to this tutorial in text form on my video blog. That's at mesoatthefront.blogspot.com. There'll be a link to that blog and the post in the video description and the first pinned comment in the comment section below. I know that like pretty much every <laughs> YouTuber tells you to do this, but uh, if you do like this video or find it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you disliked it, I'd prefer if you just told me why there was an issue you had with it and not give me a downvote. But if you feel strongly motivated, then, you know, give me a thumbs down and I won't take it too personally. So anyway, aside from that, uh, I don't know what my next video tutorial will be about. Uh, I have a number of potential things that I might look at. If you have any suggestions, you can leave them in the comments section. But until next time, all I can really say is happy video editing.